My name is Alessandra Wunzbach, and I'm the Special Ed Coordinator for Condon School District, and I work with Rinda. I'm Jasmine Morrow. I'm the Speech Therapist in two different counties, and I work with Rinda. So today we're going to just discuss about how to have a, a special needs student in your class, and one of the things where how would you identify environmental factors that may affect a student? What would you do to help that student? And you can... Um, eliminate or control the factors that are surrounding the student's behavior and teach them alternate be alternative behaviors instead of eliminating behavior. Teach them something that's more socially acceptable. Um, I would um, suggest for teachers to be patient because you might not always be able to find, <laughs> you might not always be able to find what is bothering them until they open up, which is when you were talking about they should have a relationship with their student. So and um, understanding that behavior is often a form of communication. And there are a couple of examples of that, such as a student that has autism may not always be able to express themselves or their feelings. And um, I have a student that I'm currently working with that has oppositional defiant disorder, and he was extremely embarrassed um, by the fact that he had to be in the resource room. And so every day, whenever he walked past all the students to come into my room, he would throw slam the door and throw his books and have these horrible fits and after having talked to him about it I figured out that he was just really embarrassed and so I have him go to the bathroom first before he comes into my room so all the kids have already gone back into their classrooms so he just walks down the empty hallway and I haven't had issues with him since so it was the behavior was stimulated by himself by feeling embarrassed and it was corrected by not the other kids not seeing him and then we want you to understand that um Special needs students have a different way of thinking than those students that are in general education classrooms. Um, their processing is different. They may have, they, sorry, they may have processing delays and at times feeling overwhelmed with the work. So just give them time to process stuff. And checking in with them to make sure that they have, um, that they're on top of everything, that they're at the, at the same speed as the other students and so they don't feel like they're behind and overwhelmed and embarrassed. And having clear expectations posted in the classroom, like what your classroom rules are, have that on the wall and teach them and review them throughout the year, not just once at the beginning of the year, but throughout the year, and make sure that they really understand what's expected of them. Um, and like we said earlier, developing relationships with the students and acknowledging their strengths and validating their efforts and making sure that they're they feel welcomed and they feel cherished and understood and they feel like they're a valid part of the community. So these are our steps to having a special needs students in your classroom.